the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of his saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise unto him with the timbrel and the harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. The church is now called to worship. Praise God from whom Thank you for allowing us to come in your presence. And we pray that as we bow before you today, that you will accept our worship and that you'll bless us and make us whole again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
may be seated. Good morning, Brooklyn Temple. Oh, come on. Good morning, Brooklyn Temple. Okay, now you sound like you're awake. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to our service today. Um, you may be few in numbers, but we have a lot of spirit. <laughs> we know that as we meet today that God, his angels, the Holy Spirit are all here with us. And I pray that as you worship with us today that you will feel the presence of the Lord and that you will be edified. And when you leave this place, you will be that much better than when you came. Bless you and have a happy Sabbath. This is Josiah. Hello. Josiah became king of Israel when he was only eight years old. Yep. Now the country of Israel had a very long line of kings who did many bad things, including Josiah's father and grandfather. These kings did not follow after God, and they ignored his commandments and his law. But when Josiah became king, he did what God wanted him to and followed the example of King David. Yeah! 18 years after Josiah became king, he sent one of his court secretary, Shaphan, to God's temple. Thank you, girl. Many of the kings before Josiah did not take good care of God's house, so it was in need of repair. Hmm. While they're in the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, hey! I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. So Shaphan took the scroll back to King Josiah and read it to him. That's right, that's right, that's right. When Josiah heard what was in the book, he was greatly upset. Oh, no. Because the people of Israel were not doing the things that God asked him to do. And Josiah knew that God must be angry with Israel for not obeying his commandments. Josiah gathered together all the people of Israel to the temple and read the entire book of the covenant to them. That very day, Josiah and all the people promised that they would obey all of what God commanded with all their hearts and souls. Josiah went on to help Israel become a people fully committed to God. He tore down all the other temples and the idols that they had set up. He got rid of all the people who were doing bad things all throughout Israel. And he did all that was commanded in God's book. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength obeying all the laws of Moses, and there has never been a king like him since.
God has a plan for my life. Um, it's interesting that Josiah was only eight years old, but God had a plan for his life. And so it is with every boy and girl, every adult too, that God has a plan for your life also. So bow your heads with me and I'll pray. Father, we thank you for making a way for us, for making plans for us that are higher than our thoughts. Plans that we cannot conceive, but we can only follow. And trusting in you, we can accomplish. We ask to continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. church and happy Sabbath to all. We're opening him to this hymn number 518, Standing on the Promises.
be seated. I must fulfill the vows I made you. I shall pay you my thank offering 
for you have rescued me from death to walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Honor the Lord with your gifts and the first fruits of all your increase. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. They gave according to their means and beyond their means of their own free will. But first, they gave themselves to the Lord. Remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich, but became poor for your sake, to make you rich out of his poverty. Bring the full tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Thank you for allowing us to return to you what's yours. We thank you for giving us strength and health that we may work and we may still remain faithful to you to return to you that which is yours. We pray that you will bless it as it goes forth to do your work, but you will bless us also tremendously that we may continue to serve you and continue to help others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the scripture reading. Scripture reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Second Kings chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Now let's read it together. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedediah, the daughter of Adaiah of Bosoth. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right or to the left. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated.
happy Sabbath, everyone. So we're going to start praising the Lord with our voices. Come together and sing. Give all praises, honor, and glory to his name. Amen? Amen. So we're going to start off with some hymns. We're going to start off with Blessed Assurance, hymn 462. will be hymn number 409. Hymn number 309, I Surrender All.
Amen. Our next song will be Lord, You Are Good.
us are grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. How many of us just sometimes we sit in our room and we just have to say thank you, God, because we don't know how we been, how we got here. We don't know how we made it through.
And the church say amen. And the church say amen. I know you can do a better job than that. Let's try that one more time. And the church say amen. Has God been awesome to you? Amen, amen. We want to give God glory for all he has done and all he will do. Amen. Again, we want to welcome you to the house of God. We pray that you are blessed. We pray that you have an awesome experience in the presence of God. Now, when you feel like shouting the amen, you can shout, feel like clapping wherever you are. You can clap and praise God. Don't be ashamed in the presence of God. Amen? God has been awesome. I did not say God was good. I said God has been awesome. Amen? The fact that we are here is because of the awesomeness of God. Isn't that true? God has been awesome. At the end of our service, we're going to have a baby's blessing, a baby's dedication. And so we want to praise God for that. Amen. For those of you that are watching online, we want to welcome you to our service today. We pray that you are blessed as we worship God in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 11. 2 Kings chapter 11. While you're finding it. Second Kings chapter 11, are you there? Verse 4 says, In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard and brought them to him into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord and sure them the king's son. And he commanded them saying, this is the king that ye shall, this is the, this is the thing that ye shall do in the third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the wash of the king's house. And the third part shall be at the gate of shore. And the third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the wash of the house, that it be not broken. And two parts of all that you go forth on the Sabbath. Even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And ye shall compass the kings round about, every man with his weapon in his hand. And he that cometh within the ranges, within the ranges, let him be slain. And be ye with the king as he goeth out and as he cometh in. And the captain over the hundreds did according to all things that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his, his man that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that should go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the king. Today, we want to speak to you on the theme, God's purpose for your life. God's purpose for your life. Turn to someone and just tell them God's purpose. Come on, turn to someone, tell them, say God's purpose 
for your life will come to pass. Do you believe that? But what you're saying that what you're saying like you don't mean it. Turn to someone, tell them God's purpose for your life will come to pass. Let us pray, Father. Speak to us. For we are listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do we still have room for one song? Or we should just start preaching right now? Do we, do, should we start preaching, huh? All right, let's preach then. <laughs> I'll still find that song somewhere. <laughs> My seeing pastor and I, we were going over the sermon and we were we were trying to answer some of the difficult question about Joash, the boy king. And we're going to talk about Joash and other kings in the Bible and other people in the Bible. When I asked the Lord for a word this week, he kept sending me back to Joash. Now, it was easier for me to take another sermon that I've written and just bring it out and preach it today. But he kept sending me back to Joash. And I said, Lord, why Second Kings? And then he said to me, son, the purpose for your life will come to fruition. You did not hear that. King Ahab had been doing evil in the sight of God. The Bible says that Ahab was so bad and he was aided and abated by his wife, Jezebel. It was under Ahab's leadership that God's people fled. They hid from the king. In fact, it was under his leadership that God said, I'm going to hold back rain from heaven. I'm going to stop. I'm going to lock the heaven so that there will be no dew. You know, usually if there is no rain, you will have dew. But he said, I'm going to lock the heaven so that there will be no dew because Ahab had polluted God's people. Set up temples of worship of idols, Baal, and they're worshiping all kinds of things and doing everything else. And while they're doing that, Elijah the prophet is there, Jezebel is there, and she have her prophets also that claim that they had connection with their gods. So Ahab was so wicked that God called Elijah, told him, tell him that I'm going to lock the heaven. And God locked heaven for three and a half years. No rain. Somebody say, have mercy. No dew. Think about it. No rain. No dew. I'm going to hold everything. So the first year came and, you know, the toy was a joke. The first year came and there was no rain. All of the fountains began to run dry. The second year came, everything was just dust. The animals began to die. By the third year, the nation was in the grip of a famine. The nation was in the grip of a crisis. And it seemed that God had forgotten his people. Are you there with me? Ahab is doing his thing. Elijah comes by and Elijah they went through this whole thing, and the God that answered by fire, let him be God on Mount Carmel. God show up and answer by fire. But God did something. God said, I will replace Ahab. So, Sister Netta, God replaced Ahab. Replaced Ahab with Jehu, another king. But Jehu, sooner. He was supposed to destroy and do everything else, but Jehu too fell short. 
And when he fell short, he too came to an end. He was killed. And, and the Bible says after that, the queen, somebody say, have mercy. Attila, the queen, the Bible says that she did something amazing. She gathered together and gathered the, uh, the soldiers and everyone else. They killed everybody in the family. Every boy, girl. She said, my son will be king. But her son did not live. And because of that, she killed every, She did everything she could because she wanted to be in power. You see, people would do everything they can do to stay in power. You can say amen, say ouch. If it means even breaking the very constitution they put together to stay in power, they would do that too. You can say amen, just say ouch. You know some of them, they will tear people down so that they can stay in power. They will run you over so that they can be ahead of you. People always want, when they find an opportunity, opportunity to see a hole, they want to run there first. They want to be ahead. And sometimes in the process, they will try quenching people's dreams and aspirations. Are you there with me? And she did everything, but while she was doing that, the Bible says that the nurse hit this little boy. When I thought about it, I said, what was so special about this little boy? He was the only surviving son. If, if, if he was killed, then she would have been king or queen for the rest of her time. And you know, when I read this thing, something that caught my attention in the passage is that she ruled for about seven years. Think about it. Sometimes evil seem to be around for too long. Have you ever wondered how wicked people or bad people seem to be hanging around for a long time? And sometimes in the process, it seems that they are prospering in the process. Uh, they're not doing right. They're not living right, but they're driving the best cars. Come on, talk to me. They're not acting right, but they seem to be enjoying. Are you there with me? And it seemed that the queen was enjoying. She's going on for a while because she thought that there would be no head to take her away from the throne. She would be there forever. And while she was doing that, the priest had taken this boy. This boy was in the presence of the priest for six years. You did not hear me. In order to experience your purpose in life. Now listen to me now. In order to experience your purpose in life, point number one, you must be closer to the heart of God. You did not hear me. I asked your neighbor, are you close to the heart of God? Uh, there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. In order to experience or know your purpose in life, we must be closer to the heart of God. Because when you know God and love God and follow God, what happens? He reveals your purpose. Come on, talk to me. So my question is, are we close to the heart of God? Can you say Jesus is your friend? Are you quiet on the preacher? He stayed at the feet of the priest. He learned at the feet of the priest. He was taught at the feet of the priest. And the priest, you see, uh, something we need to understand because you're saying to me, but pastor, he is too young. These are some of the things we wrestle with. He is too young. How? I mean, how did he know he was going to be king? Let's lead us to our second point. In order for us to move ahead with our purpose, we must have people in our lives to help shape us 
Are you quiet on the preacher? Some of you can say today the reason you are here is because of people in your life. Isn't that true? Some of you can say the reason you are still serving God, the reason you can still trust God is because of people. People told you about this God. People have been talking about this God, leading you along the way about this God. It's not right. In order for us to experience our purpose in life, we must, now listen to this now, have people in our lives that will help shape us. That means the people, the friends we hang with, the people we follow better be people that know God. Because you know, if they don't know God, they will drive, they will take you away from God. Are you quiet on the preacher? That's why people say, how come they grew up in the church? How come they did this in the church? How come they sang in the praise team? How come they sang in the choir? How come they came to church, but now they're no longer in church? You see, they had the first and they were taught in the presence of the priest. They were taught in the presence of God. But you see, their mentors were not those that knew God. So in order to experience your full potential in life, we must first be at the feet of Jesus. Are you quiet on the preacher? Mary knew how to be at the feet of Jesus. While her sister Martha was doing stuff, cooking, parking, cleaning, doing everything, Mary knew that at the presence of Jesus there was joy. While the sister was doing all the other things that she taught it that was important, Mary knew that Jesus was the most important person. So in order... I'm doing some teaching now. So in order to know your purpose, God's purpose for your life, for my life, one, we should do what? Come on, help the preach. We should do what? Stay in the presence of God. Two, we must have people that will help us do what? Isn't that true? You know, when I was growing up, well, I guess I'm still growing up. <laughs> when I was growing up, we used to have Godmother and Godfather. Is that, that still happening today? Godparents. I guess in America it's not happening. Isn't that right? But from where I grew up, you must have Godparents. In other words, those were the parents, those were the friends that helped shape your child's life as they grew older. Are you there with me? Because you see, in, in Africa, from where I came from, we believe that it takes a village. I know it's in America. They say, oh, don't touch my kid. Come on, have mercy. Somebody say, ouch. From where I came from, if they misbehave at home, misbehave at home, they got lickings at home. Then when it went out, you did not hear me. <laughs> in fact, a sister or a neighbor or a friend will see your son in the street and they will hold them by the ear and bring them back home. Or you're quiet on the preacher. It doesn't happen in America. Somebody say, ouch. But it kept them, listen to me now, it kept them closer to God. They knew that all eyes were watching them. Come on, talk to me. They knew that they had to live right and, and do right because Sister X saw them. Brother X, come on, talk to me, somebody. If there's one thing the devil knows to do is to get us, get our children while they're still young. You did not hear me. Because when he gets them, he understands he got you. Because you will spend your whole life trying to take care of them and not focus on God. He knows what to do to take joy away from your life. You did not hear me. He will attack our children because he understands if he attacks them, he will attack us. And he knows that he can take joy away that way. 
keep us at night, up at night. The priests and the leaders helped to ship this little boy's life so that by the time he was six, the priest saw it and said, I think now we can start getting ready to crown him next year. We think now that he's learned enough to get him to the point. To, I, I would think about it. How can a six-year-old be destined as a king? But I want to say to us today, if they are in the presence of God, this is what I read in Jeremiah chapter 15. I read this. And let, me, let me read this for you. The Bible says something very amazing. Jeremiah chapter 1. I got to read this for you. The Bible says something very amazing about, about us that we must understand. Because sometimes we think they are too young. Isn't that right? We think they are what? Too young. That they don't know what they are doing. But I want to say to you that the music they listen to while they are still young is the music they will listen to when they grow older. Uh, whatever you present to them is what they're going to follow as they grow older. Jeremiah chapter uh, 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 1, the Bible says in verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou was come forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. God said, before we were even born, we had a purpose. He had things that he had set in place before a baby is even conceived. God said, before he said, I've already have a name for you. I have a destination for you. I have things in place for you. He said, if you just found somebody that will keep you nearer to my heart, if you found somebody that will lead you along the way, you will experience your full potential. Oh, you can do a better job than that. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Because what God is saying is that all of us have been destined for greatness. Somebody got to give God a better hand of praise than that. He is saying, before I was born, listen to me, I was born somewhere in the boondocks in Africa. He said, James Bowler, while you were still a baby, in fact, before you were born, before your parents thought about a name, before they started buying stuff, I already had a plan for you that years later, you will be in Brooklyn, you will be on Lewis Avenue. I did not know about Brooklyn, but God said a long time ago, I had a purpose, I had a plan, all I needed to to do is to stay near my heart. Are you there with me? Come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Keep praying to me. Are you there with me? Find somebody that will help you along the way. Find somebody that will lead you along the way. Find somebody that will pray you along the way. Just find them. If you do that, you will experience your potential. We give excuses as to why we can be what we should be. You did not hear me. We do what? We give excuses. Oh, because I was born here. That's not an excuse for God. Because God is everywhere. Come on, talk to me. Oh, because I did not have it. That's not an excuse for God. The cattle on the thousand hills are his. The word and day that they therein belong to God. Come on, talk to me. Some of us went to school with our money. You did not hear me. Are you quiet on the preacher? Do I have a witness in the house? Can somebody testify with me? I went to school with our money. Come on, talk to me. No parents. But I have people that kept me closer to God. You did not hear me. I have people that would see me and say, oh, you belong in church. What were you doing out here this time of the night? Come on, you're quiet on the preacher.
when I read this, I said to myself, if God knew me before I was born, I, even sh I should not even use the word if, since God. Put that in the personal pronoun. Come on, talk to me. Since God knows my name. How you quiet on the preacher? Uh-huh. Since God knew where I was going to be born, come on, talk to me. Since God knew me from the time, you see, that's why the devil tried to play trick on us all the time. Every time we mess up, he says you're not qualified. Every time we mess up, he says you will not make, reach a full potential. But if we understand that before we were born, why? In our mother's womb, God had a purpose and a plan. We'll tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Are you there with me? When you stay closer, that's why, you know, there are people that will try to kill your purpose in life. Don't look at anybody. But if you know some of them, just say, ouch. You were growing up, they said to you, or some are still speaking now, they said to you, you can still hear their voice. You will not make it. Or you are not important. They look at you say, you will not be anybody, nobody. Somebody say, ouch. They look at you and say, where are you going to get the money from? You're talking about going to America. How are you going to get there? The look at you saying, oh, you want to go to that university. You don't, you don't have the right grades. How are you going to get qualified? The look at you and say, you don't have money. How are you going to get to the school? I remember, I remember when I, I was offered five scholarships. For playing soccer. Top school, UConn and all of that years ago. But the Lord had a purpose for my life. You did not hear me. And to be a preacher, I love what I do. Listen to me now. And I remember sitting in front of my counselor that day. He had all the, the letters, five of them. He read all of them. He said, James, I know you are new to America. I know you don't understand what you, what you want to become. I know he told me all the reasons as to why I should accept those scholarships. He said, you came from a civil war. You don't have a mother or father to pay your fees. How are you going to go? Uh, 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 can you just take one of these? And when he was done, I said to him, the Lord, you did not hear me said I should go to Andrews University. He said, what, what, what is that? I said, Andrews University. He said, where? I said, well, check it up. He checked it. He said, Berrien Springs, Michigan. He said, James, do you understand there's a private school? Do you know that the money they're going to charge you is a lot? Do you know you just, I know your entire family. I know your story. I know there is no way you can go to the school. And while he was talking at that time, my hair was bowed down while he was talking. And as I lifted my eyes and looked at him, I had tears in my eyes. I said to him, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, I went through a civil war where there was nobody to rescue me. God came as my rescue. I said, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death and I did not fear any evil. I said, there was no food and God made a way. He provided when I needed food. I said, there were times I had nowhere to call safe heaven, but God became the shelter in a time of storm. I said, I lost loved ones, but he kept me through death valleys. I said, the only reason I'm here today, it was because God saw it. God knew it. And God, the same Jesus, uh, will take me to my destination. He said, he, he looked at me and he sat back in his seat. He said to me, James, this God thing you're talking about. I said, yeah, what, what, what does that mean? He said to me, tonight I'm going to play the lottery just for you. I said to him, you don't need to play the lottery. You're not hearing me. 
You see, when you spend time in the presence of God, you're not perfect, but you spend time in the presence of a perfect God. I wish I had a witness in the house. When you have somebody that can hold your hand along the way and tell you that you can make it. Come on, talk to me. When you have that with you, you can experience your full potential. Are you there with me? You can experience the purpose that God laid on you. I went to Andrew. He said, oh, you did not hear me. Because what God was trying to do, he was, why getting me ready to go to the Andrews? He did not hear me. I said, God's plan for your life, for my life can come to fruition. God knew that in 2021, May, you would have been here May 22nd. God knew a long time ago. But you're quiet on the preacher. You think it's an accident? Think about those that died from COVID. But God knew we would, have all, we would all be here today. Isn't that right? What God was doing was that God was working out the purpose for my life, the plan for my life. In the process, God was trying to find me a bride. Come and talk to me. You did not hear me. I'm going to send him to Michigan. A cold place. A racist place. You did not hear me. But I'm going to send an African there. Come on, talk to me. And while he is there, I'm going to teach him to grow in me. And you see, sometimes while you're trying to experience your full potential, there will be people along the way that will try to kill the dream along the way. They will try to kill the process along the way. But I read somewhere, Habakkuk, God said to him, write the vision, make it plain, so that they that read it might run, for the vision is true, it will surely come to pass. Whatever I say, must come to pass. Do you believe that today? If you believe that, give God a hand of praise. That the purpose for your life, the purpose for my life must come to pass. Do you know your purpose? Do you know your purpose? You see, Jesus knew his purpose. In fact, John the Baptist knew his purpose. John the Baptist said, I am a forerunner. Come on, talk to me. Before I came to planet earth, God had anointed me to be a for, to be the forerunner of the Messiah. I came to just prepare the way for when he comes, he must increase and I will decrease. Are you there with me? John the Baptist knew his purpose. But what's about Jesus? Did Jesus know his purpose? Jesus knew what he came to do on this earth. Did he really know? After the devil tempted Jesus along the way, after the devil told Jesus, turn these stones into bread. After G the devil took Jesus to the high temple and said, drop down, jump down, and God would give his angel charge over you. After he showed him the whole world and said, I gave you the whole world and his glory. After he asked him, all I want you to do is to bow down to me. You see, the devil understands the only way to get us not to uh, accomplish or fulfill our purpose is if we follow him. You did not hear me. If we bow down to him, then we will not fulfill our purpose. Are you there with me? That's the only reason we will not accomplish that which God has set us up four, are you there with me? He said to Jesus in Luke chapter 4, if you do all of these things, I will give you everything else. And the Bible says, Jesus said to him, 
answering him, it is written, it is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Are you there with me? And when Jesus was done talking, Jesus said unto him, the Spirit of God is upon me. Are you there with me? Because he has sent me, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I came to let the poor know that I am still the way maker. I came to let the poor know that I'm still the miracle worker. I came to let them know that I'm still the promise keeping God. The Lord has anointed me to let them know that I'm faithful. The Lord has anointed me to let them know I will accomplish that which I've set up to do. Are you there with me? He said, the Lord has anointed me to preach gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart that I wish I had someone in the house. Are you broken hearted today? Jesus said, I have come to heal your broken heartedness. Are you there with me? He said, I can take care of your sorrow. I can wipe your weeping eyes. He said, I can bring back joy where there is no joy. Are you there with me? He said, I can restore that which the enemy has stolen. I can go into the devil's camp and I can take your children back. I can go into the enemy's camp and I can repair your broken marriage. I can go to your community and I can save you. Are you there with me? Someone give the Lord a hand of praise wherever you are. You said, God has anointed me. You see, Jesus knew his purpose. God has anointed me to deliver, to preach deliverance to the captive. Come on, someone give the Lord a hand of praise. God have anointed me to preach deliverance. To you quiet on the preacher. Oh, I read these things, I get excited. Jesus, he said, I know my purpose. I know why I came to planet earth. I just did not come to die. I came to heal the brokenhearted. There are lonely people everywhere. There are sad people everywhere. People dying by their suffer. He said, but I came to heal the brokenhearted. I came to bring deliverance. That's why in order to experience our purpose, we must spend time at the feet of Jesus. He said, there are people that have been blinded by the things of this world. They're blinded by the flashy things of this world. He said, but I came to give them sight, I came to recover their sight so that they can see that their purpose in life is not about all these earthly things because one day they will grow strangely dim. Do you believe that today? Can you imagine some of us are looking good in our suits today? But a but few months ago, your suits were all hanging. Come on, talk to me. A few months ago, all your dresses were hanging. Come on, talk to me. A few months ago, you could look at your nice pair of sneakers and you could wear it. Come on, talk to me. Because they were all hiding because COVID had intensified. He said, all these things on earth will grow strangely dim. Are you there with me? I came to open your eyes. Oh, someone should give God a better hand of praise than that. I came to open your eyes. Are you there with me? And then he said, I came to set at liberty them that were bruised I came, Jesus said, I know my purpose. Son, let him know that they are bruised. But I want him to know by my straps. They shall be healed. Come on, talk to me. Let him know that they are bruised. But, but I was wounded for their transgressions. Let him know that the chastisement of their peace was laid upon me. Jesus said, let him know they are bruised. But I can heal their bruised situation. Let him know that. Let him know. 
that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. You did not hear me. Don't we know that this word is coming to an end? Are you quiet on the preacher? Do you believe that? Don't you know that things are wrapping up? Don't you know that the nations is in the nations are in distress? Don't you know there are death everywhere? Don't you know today children will go to bed with our safe drinking water? Don't you understand that children will go to bed with nowhere to rest their head? Don't you know today that somebody will have to go and bury somebody? Don't you know that somebody will get a text message today telling them that they've lost their loved ones? Don't you understand that? that this world is coming to an end. But friends of mine, while all of these things are happening, Jesus said, I want you to understand your purpose. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. But do you know your purpose in life? Do you know what God has in store for you? Huh? Do you understand that the devil might throw challenges at you, but it does not derail God's purpose for your life? A few years ago, I gave you these two stories and end the sermon. I sat in the presence of my professor, claiming to know God. I'm going back and forth with him, tell him these are not my grades. And that thing hurt me so much. I told him, I said, these are not my grades. You just, he wouldn't give me, wrote C, C, C. I'm taking three classes from this man. Give me all C's. So I came, I presented the papers, I said, look, I got a B here, I got an A, and I got an A. And when I'm done, after he was done talking, and I said, but I made all the grades. He said, but you don't have proof. I said, I have proof. You should give me the records. When he went for his record, I said, by the way, I got all the papers. So I brought all my papers. And I showed him the papers. And he looked me in the face and said to me, James, you are young. You don't know what you want in life at this time. And you can go and flip some burgers and after a couple of years come back and go to and, and continue this thing. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you? Because these are some of the things our young people have to go through. These are some of the things you have gone through. Are you there with me? But while he was saying that, I looked him in the face. I said to him, you're a liar. You see, when you spend time with God... You did not hear me. When you grow under the feet of Jesus, when you understand as a little boy with nine other siblings or eight other siblings and their mother, no mother, there were times there were no food, but you did not go to bed hungry. Well, you understand that you went to school when other kids could not afford to go to school. You went to the best of school with no money. Come on, talk to me. When you know all of that, you know your purpose in life. When he was done talking, I said, you, 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 you kidding me? So I had to take it to the top, to the chain, the top, the dean of the department. And when I went to the dean, I remember speaking to the dean very passionately. I said to him, I've come here. I have no father here, no mother here. I've looked up to you all as a son, and this is how you all repay me. And the dean paused. He said, James, what are you saying? And I said to him, these are my papers. These are the grades that were given to me. How is this possible? Then he said, call him. I went back down the hall. His office right around the corner. I called him. He came in the dean's office. He and the dean began to talk. The dean said, James, just give us a, 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 a moment. Go downstairs for a while. I went. I stood in the corner. Did not go downstairs. Have mercy, somebody. Someone talking about you. You're going to go someplace else. Come on, talk to me. 
I closed the door, ran down the stair, came back up and stood right back in the corner. I wish I had a witness in the house. I better hear what they're discussing. And the dean went on to say, how will you do this? Don't you know he have all proof? But before I left the office, I said to the dean, if this is not rectified, I will sue him, sue the school, and sue this department. You did not hear me. Because when you know your purpose in life, uh, nobody should intimidate you. Come on, talk to me. That's why you got to train your children that they were fearfully and wonderfully made. Are you there with me? You got to let them know that they are a work of a master designer. You got to let us all know that Jesus came and died for us. We are better than what we are now. Come on, talk to me. We are worth more than what we are now. Come on, talk to me. I read some of Jesus said, you mess with them, you mess with the apple of my eye. Are you quiet on the preacher? But he was doing all of that so that I cannot be a preacher today. You're not hearing me. But when you stay at the feet of God, you can fulfill your potential. As I close, I'm going to ask for my clerk to come downstairs. There are times that sometimes we ourselves, we ourselves, because of the fear of the unknown, can stop for our own progress. Sometimes because of challenges in life, we can, we ourselves can sometimes stop and not fulfill the purpose God have laid for us in life. Are you there with me? I remember graduating from school, have a master's degree. Uh, I, I can get a better amen than that. And when I graduated, I'll never forget. I graduated, I had a present that same weekend. My daughter was born that same weekend. So I'm going to give God a hand of praise for the preacher. <laughs> and then after that, I remember we're still on campus. But, 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 but I, I, I told my wife, I said, now I had some dreams in life that I wanted to accomplish. One of them was to be a soccer star. And I think now I can take at least a few years off before I get back to preaching. And I can go and play soccer somewhere. My wife prayed with me. She said, baby, if you want to go, well, between you and God, I bought my ticket on my way to Spain, Madrid, Spain. That morning when I got to the airport in Niles, Michigan, I got a phone call from a friend of mine. Another preacher, he called me. He said, Bola, I said, yes. He said, the Lord laid a word on me to tell you this morning. And I said, what is the word? He said, I don't know where you're going right now, but the Lord told me to tell you not to go because he has anointed you. You did not hear me. He said to me, Bola, the Lord said that the gift he has given you is unrevocable. You better don't go anywhere. And when he was done talking, I lied to him on the phone. I said, I'm not going anywhere. You did not hear me. But I got on the plane. I was in Brussels. From there, I found myself in Spain. I played a few games and very successful. The night I was, the day I was supposed to sign the contract, that night, I came back to my hotel room. As I walked in the room, I saw a lady sitting in the hallway. She had a red Bible in her hand, a Spanish lady, and began to speak Spanish. And I prized, I turned around, the Lord caught my attention. He said, ask her. I, I turned around, I came back, I said, uh, are you okay? In Spanish, she said, yes. I said, you know, introduce myself and everything else. I said to her, do you understand what you're reading? She said, no. I said, I'm coming. The Lord said, son, you got a teacher. You got a master degree, you're going to play soccer somewhere. Because you want to get money in this world. Come on, talk to me. You're not hearing me. 
I went to my hotel room, the Bible that I've taken, that I hid in, in my suitcase. Come on now. You see, when you spend time at the feet of God, when you have people along the way to guide you, are you there with me? Everywhere you go, you will travel a little Bible somewhere. Are you there with me? You will hide his word in your heart. Your, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Are you there with me? And I remember going, got my Bible, came back. And the interaction between this lady and I, she was speaking Spanish. I was understanding all she was saying. I was speaking English. She was understanding all I was saying. And I told her how she was special to God. How God has saved her life for a purpose. And I began to tell her. And she began to cry. She said, you don't know me. But I own the hotel you are in right now. And I own five other hotels. She said, you don't know me. But God must have saved you here. She began to tell me her story and we were done. She said, I'm going to send you to Venezuela to go and meet my family and share with them the good news of Jesus. And when she was done, I left from there. I went in my hotel room. I got on my knees. I said, Lord, forgive me because you called me. You give me the purpose. You told me, son, I've anointed you. I lie. But will you have mercy upon me? Friends of mine today, the same God is saying you can reach your potential. If you turn your life over to him, if you put your hands in his hands, he said, I, God, I call you before you were born. You were in your mother's womb. I had a name written for you. And one day, soon and very soon, when this world comes to an end, I will call your name, my child, my daughter. I will say these words, well done. Enter into the joy prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. You undid, you undid heavy burdens. You broke the chain of wickedness. Enter into the joy. Come and put your hands together for God wherever you are. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Friends of mine, what makes this possible is Jesus. What makes this possible is Jesus. Moses said, I will leave the treasure of Pharaoh. But I'd rather suffer affliction with my people. Zacchaeus said, Lord, I will give back all I have stolen. Because I'd rather have Jesus than save our gold. Friends of mine, we can read our full potential. I want us to understand that we can, we can have our purpose fulfilled in our lives. Because Jesus, this is what Jesus does. He said, if you put your life in my hands, if you put your will in my will, I will transfer my life to your life. Oh, I wish I could get a better amen than that. I know you're still lying, but I'm going to put a perfect record in your life. Come on, come on, come on, talk to me. I know you are still acting up, but I'm going to give a perfect life for you. Oh, I love this song. In 412, the hymn, look upon Jesus. Are you there with me? Sinless is he. But Father, impute your life unto me. My life, my life has some problem. It has sin and woe. Are you there with me? But Lord, if you can, if you can just cover me. Come on, somebody tell Jesus to cover you. Look upon Jesus. 
Look upon Jesus. Sinless is he. Father, impure his life unto me. He, my life a scarlet, my sin and woe. Oh, cover, cover with it. His life whiter than snow. Deep, deep are the wounds. Transgressions have made. Hey, red, red are the stains. My soul is afraid. Just hold oh, to because. Jesus, Jesus with thee, save, save from the Lord that man judges me. Come on, church, help me. Cover with him. Put your hands together. Whiter than snow. Fullness, fullness of him. Life then, then shall I know. My life, my life a scar, my sin, cover, cover with it. his life, whiter than snow. Long in the joy, long in the joy, pardon to know, pardon to know, Jesus, Jesus holds out, uh, Roll white as snow. Oh, Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive Leave him. Leave him my own. Gladly, gladly I wear that pure life alone. Come on, church. Come on with me. 